Hello there ladies and gentlemen, how are you doing? It's Alexander Hilly123 here and it's time for a new video. And as you can see from the title, it's time for a new pickups video today, my first in nearly four months on the channel. And you might be able to hear in the background my fan, which is on right there. It's very hot at the moment and I am trying to cope the best that I can. But we're English and we're quite simply not used to this bullshit. But yeah, nearly four months is my last pickups video. It's quite a while, isn't it? So let's get started. Also my new Evil Within 2 poster, because when the series got canned, I thought that I may as well pick up the last remaining bits of merchandise that I could from the EU Bethesda store, which is located in Germany, I do believe. And I did so. There's also an Evil Within 2 cup, but I've got my Evil Within 1 cup. So until that breaks, I thought I'm not going to get another one because there's no point. But by the time it does break, that Evil Within 2 cup won't be there. <laughs> there we have it. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, today I've got five games to show you. Two physical and three altogether on the Xbox 360, which I played, of course, on the Xbox One, and two on the PS4. First one was this game, Darksiders, and this game had me thinking to myself and wondering why it is that I play games in the first place, and in 2019, nearly at the age of 30, what it is that I want to get out of video games, and playing a game for the first time. Because, ladies and gentlemen, I rage quit this game and uninstalled it from my Xbox One after reasonably enjoying it for six hours. Now, I, 99% <coughs> of the time, play games for the first time on normal difficulty. This was no different. Um, played on normal and then ended up rage quitting because a boss was too hard. Now, I looked online and there was a mix of get good faggot, of course, we're going to see that, get good faggot. What, have you got any explanation? Who did you defeat the boss? No, you're not going to tell us that. You're just going to say, good faggot. So, obviously, there are those on the internet. You've always got to be prepared for that because those people are idiots and I'd like to punch them in the face. But also, there are a lot of people saying this is a terrible boss and actually getting into the nitty-gritty as to why. It was a boss called Tiamat. And it's, as far as I remember, some kind of weird flying dragon. Well, it's going to be weird because dragons don't exist. But... It was a flying dragon, and the boss was heard because of the game's mechanics and because it wanted you, what it wanted you to do. And it's just one of those moments where you just cannot understand where the devs were coming from. Not only that, but every time you died, you had to watch about a 45 second cutscene, which was unskippable, before fighting the boss again. Now, it's a bit, is it, <coughs> my memory, because it's a while back now, it's about two or three months since I rage quit this game, but my memory serves me correctly it was something along the lines of you had to throw these kind of fireballs at the boss and then it breathed fire at you and it kind of blew up on its face and hit it and there were like three phases to the fight no checkpoints but the game's controls and mechanics were not built to do that boss i don't look online and like i say there are a lot of people who agreed with me i was enjoying the game up until that point and it was going to be i think a game which i reasonably liked but didn't love, but I may well have played Darksiders 2, but this left such a sour taste in my mouth, it was like, I'm not, paying, I'm not buying the second game, you can go fuck yourself. Five hours, guys, five hours I spent on that boss, and it's just one of those things where, you know, I've completed hard games on hard difficulties before, but this wasn't hard naturally, it was the devs making a shit boss with mechanics that didn't work. Tiamat, the boss was called. If you've played the game, do you agree with me? Do you disagree with me? I don't know how you can disagree with me. Either way, I wanted to just pop it onto easy difficulty and, and do that, but the game wasn't hard before that. Uh, <clears throat> so, I got to thinking, maybe now, with the lack of time that I have, I should be playing games on easy for the first time, so I can not have these experiences but I can't remember having an experience like that we've all been through that kind of thing we've all played a game and not completed it because of rage quitting or the fact that we didn't enjoy it for whatever reason you fucking bank wank bang, 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 white banker anyway but yeah I'm not going to be playing that again now because I'm not going to start up again on easy because you can't switch the difficulty midway through either which you can on most games Shame, because like I say, it wasn't a bad game, guys. It wasn't amazing, but it wasn't a bad game. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, second up, I want to talk about this game in depth. I nearly did an actual standalone 
video review of this game. It is, pardon me, Days Gone, which I purchased digitally the day that it came out. And the reviews for this game initially were absolutely scathing and pretty damn uh, bad. But when the patches came out, and yeah, that is the way modern games work, they expect you to buy the game for £50 at launch and then absolutely plaster the game with loads of updates and shit when the game should have been ready to go at launch. But the patches worked and helped the game. And not only that, but Days Gone starts slowly. It's very repetitive. But the more you get into it, the more you realise it's not as cliche story-wise as you thought. And the game gets better for sure. It's just the fact of the matter that it takes a good six to eight hours of gameplay before this game really gets going and not everyone is going to be able to appreciate that and I don't blame them because time is of the essence like I was saying with Darksiders 1 but this is more my style of game because I love horror and I love survival horror I love uh, games of zombies and apoc apocalyptic themes of whatever kind in them so this is an open world game but it reminds me of old school PS2 era open world games which might sound like a, a criticism but for me it isn't because it's a very very big game but when I ra when I, I didn't really rage quit but I, when I stopped playing Horizon Zero Dawn because I was bored of it I had 18 fucking side quests on I never had more than three side quests with Days Gone because it's the kind of open world game where the quests that you do the missions that you do whatever you want to call them they come to you. You don't search them out by going to a certain location on the map. You have a radio, and once you complete a lot of missions, all the NPCs of the game, all these people that you meet, will call you at once. And before you know it, you had no missions, now you've got five. So the game just gives you what you need to do. And I really like that. It doesn't mean you have to search things out. It's not like, for example, the old Fallout games, totally different kind of open world games were. I completed Fallout 3 two times before I did two of the main missions in the game because I just didn't go to that area of the map. And devs these days aren't brave enough to do that because they're too scared of you missing great opportunities. That's why Fallout 3 is a masterpiece in my opinion. And it's so much better than Bethesda are these days. Because you can genuinely do anything. You want to shoot a child in the head and decapitate him? Go ahead, do it. It's absolute madness, that freedom that you had in that game. But Days Gone, it gives you the missions and you just quite simply do them. Now, there's a lot of repetition here, but there is a lot to do. You've got the Nero checkpoints, you've got the hordes, you've got the nests, you've got the ambush camps, you've got the kind of old school Grand Theft Auto missions where you've got to chase someone down on a bike and shoot them off the bike without killing them. And there's a lot of variety to do, but you do it in a quick space of time and you level up really quickly on this game as well kill one enemy get 20 xp like kill 10 enemies and you're already like 20 percent of the way there to leveling up and i think with a lot of other modern open world games for me it seems like it's a real grind and a slog to level up with days gone it isn't it's fun three or four hours of gameplay and you've gone like from level one to level six you know what i mean and every level you gain a new skill point this, the upgrade system in this game is simple, but it's fun, and everything matters. You play a normal difficulty, you'll have a decent challenge. kind of challenge where you're close to dying, and you take a lot of damage on this game quickly, but you're not overpowered because your weapon's at the start of shit. So it's not full-on survival horror, of course, but it does have a good survival feel to it. My favourite part of the game was probably fighting the Freakers, as they're called in the game. The human AI is bad, and also, in terms of cr criticisms, the frame rate, frame rate was appalling. I've got a regular PS4, I've not got a PS4, PS4 Slim, but yeah, the frame rate in certain areas is bad. The load times are bad, and there's a few glitches and issues in terms of like, technical basis, but that's the way it is with a lot of modern games. But overall, if you like games... Similar to Days Gone, if you like open world games, if you like zombie games, I would recommend buying it, especially considering that the price is now coming down. It is that kind of game where you're probably going to enjoy it more, knowing that you've not paid full price for it. But overall, I really enjoyed it. I like the aspect of the gas cans in the game, which help you fuel your bike. If you take that for granted, and you're left with no gas out in the middle of nowhere, you are screwed. So you've got to keep 
uh, an eye on your resources, your weapons, your health. It becomes less scarce as the game goes on. But yeah, there's a lot of fun weaponry and a lot of fun things to do in this game. And the, the story was also less cliche than I thought it'd be. The more you play this game, get halfway into it, and uh, the story's pretty gripping, you know. It, it really is. I didn't see that coming, but the second half of the game, story-wise, was really interesting. I actually wanted to know what was going to happen. So, yeah, Days Gone, solid game, and the secret ending blew my mind. I'm not going to give any spoilers away, but oh my lord, that was amazing. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, coming up next, I've not played this game yet, so I'm not going to talk about it. It is a game that's 13 years old. It's Lost Planet Extreme Condition. And I purchased this, and then I saw the reviews for the Lost Planet series, especially 2 and 3, and then I kind of wished I hadn't purchased it in the first place. Not played it yet, but I've seen the reviews for 2 and 3, and they're really shit. This is around the time after Resident Evil 4 and after Devil May Cry 3, where Capcom were on the downward spiral before they came upwards again. And even this game didn't get great reviews, but it's supposedly the best Lost Planet game I got it very, very cheap. I may as well play that, but as to whether I play 2 and 3, even if I enjoy that, I'm not sure, because the general consensus is that Lost Planet 2 and 3 are nowhere near as good. But if you played the games and you actually enjoyed them, please tell me, because who knows, I might well play them one day still. And next up, ladies and gentlemen, is a game that is impossible for me to show you physically, unless I purchased the PC version back in the day, because it is the original Crisis on the Xbox 360 version that I purchased. The Xbox 360 PS3 version came out in 2011, four years after the original game, and when it came out in 2007, Crisis was not released on the PS3 or the Xbox 360 because it was too damn powerful for those consoles to hold. And then a meme started on the internet, is your system powerful enough to run Crisis? It's something that people still say to this day apparently, which is very, very funny, and the game does indeed look beautiful. And I actually posted a picture of the game with my telly, you know, with my phone, whilst playing it. And 30 people on Instagram liked the post. That's something that I really like about Instagram, because if I did that on Twitch, not Twitch, uh, Twitter, maybe one bot or one person would see it. But no, 30 people liked that post on Instagram. And that's the one thing that I really like about that website. Music and games are my two passions. And if I post something, uh, whatever it is, People usually see that post and I can interact with people who are passionate about the same things and that's really, really cool. I didn't know that that was a thing with Instagram or I didn't expect it to be like that for me. I just thought that I'd post up all these different things about games and music and one person per post, if I was lucky, would see it. But no, 30 people. Jesus, that's a lot, man. Really cool. All these people that are passionate about a 12-year-old game. That's incredible. And Crisis was a fun game. I enjoyed it. The last 20% of the game turns into some weird sci-fi game, which came out of nowhere, and I thought nearly derailed the entire game. If you've never played the game for whatever reason, I'm not going to give spoilers away, but um, yeah, the last 20% of the game is very different. The game is first person. It relies on stealth, but I didn't use the stealth that much because... You're fighting human enemies for the most part in the game, these Korean soldiers. And it's interesting because there's very, very limited uh, enemy fights in this game. You're just fighting the Korean soldiers. I think there's a few different enemies here and there. In the last 20% of the game, you start fighting a lot of different enemies, like I say. But it doesn't get old, despite you just fighting these Korean soldiers. And I think that's a testament to the game. The game design is really good. It can be quite samey. It's kind of... Far Cry looking, I've never played any Far Cry games, but it's like a, a desert island, paradise desert island a lot of the f first Crisis game is, and I've seen bits of Crisis 2 and 3, and it looks more like an urban city environment, a lot more bland and a lot more grey, but Crisis 1 looks beautiful, it does kind of look same at times, but the fact that you're fighting the same enemies, and the game lasted about 10 hours for me, it's not a long campaign, but it never got old, apart from the last 20% of the game. You can put like a, a suppressor on your gun, but once you kill that enemy with a suppressor, it autoly, automatically sorry, detaches the suppressor, I think, and you have a cloak, which is basically your stealth. So you press LB on the Xbox uh, controller, and you've got the cloak. Starts at 100, goes down to zero. Once you get to zero, then the cloak disappears, and you've got to regenerate it by staying still. If you move, the quicker you move, 
the quicker your stealth disappears. Interesting mechanic, works really well. Um, it's a linear game, Crisis, but it's on quite a big map. For 2007, this is a really big area, you know, the game itself. But there's a lot of empty spaces. Pink Floyd. There's a lot of empty spaces in the map, and I can't think of another game that's really done that in the same way, to be honest with you. It's like a little sandbox crisis, even though it's linear. And you've got secondary objectives, which always bother me in a linear old school game. But no, the secondary objectives are absolutely fine. If you play the game for the first time, make sure you do the secondary objectives. Also, this game gave me shitloads of achievements. I got like 700 gamer score points and about 40 different achievements, which is very interesting. Because these days, we could have tacked on multiplayer achievements and trophies a shit. For example, The Last of Us, absolute masterpiece of the game, the trophies are awful because they gave you so many multiplayer trophies. Multiplayer trophies and achievements can fuck off. I'm telling you right now. But Crisis 1 was good. 20% of the game was awful. Nearly ruined the game, but I ended up enjoying it for the most part. Good experience, and I will definitely be purchasing Crisis 2. And lastly, ladies and gentlemen, is Detroit Become Human, which was free on PlayStation Plus for last month, July. I purchased it, still not played it, and also Heavy Rain came with it as well, so I've got Heavy Rain for the PS4, so it's a double pickup. The only thing is, I've actually got Heavy Rain on the PS3, but never completed it, because it was around about the time in late 2016, early 2017, where <clears throat> I was having trouble with my PS3 controller. My PS3 controller now works it's like a miracle for years, I've had three PS3 controllers, guys. The first two had a mind of its own, and you'd be playing a game, and your character would turn around, the menu button would appear, and I wasn't pressing anything. It was like, fucking ghost is pressing these buttons. Apparently, it happens a lot with a PS3 controller, because it's cheap garbage. PS4 controller's a lot better, but with my third... This is just squeaking. With my third uh, PS3 controller, it's not happening. It finally works properly, hopefully. For the love of God, it stays the same, because I'm sick death to having to have to pay 30 pounds for fucking second hand ps3 control it sucks ass man but yeah detroit become human and heavy rain not started them yet but i'm looking forward to playing detroit become human and just seeing what i think of it i'm kind of sick of the whole walking dead telltale games kind of thing though where you make decisions i saw a bit of avoiding the puddle lord aris he was trying to kill every enemy he could by either making no decisions or making bad decisions and still these enemies uh, enemies these characters that you play were still alive and nothing really affected much so yeah he's probably sick of them as well i'm guessing very, very funny indeed. But, ladies and gentlemen, next pickup video won't be for a while because I've not, pay, um, not purchased any games since these five. And in terms of vinyl as well, I've only picked up one vinyl since my last vinyl pickups video. So there's got to be another four vinyls and another five video games until I have to do pickup videos again. So it's going to be a while, but in the meantime, there's going to be gameplay because I've got Resident Evil Remake, Chris Redfield coming up, and I've also got a few other playthroughs planned as well. And if you look on my YouTube channel itself, the page, uh, my YouTube page, you'll see a link to my Twitch. Please give me a follow on there as well if you haven't already, because I'm enjoying streaming again. I can't do it that much because of limited time, but these last few weeks I've had three or four different people in the stream at one time. And um, last week I also nearly got 10 viewers. I've had a few people supporting me, um, and it's much appreciated over there because... It might only be three or four people, but it's better than zero people, of course. So, yeah, I will be streaming tonight as well. I think I'm going to get back into Rocket League. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.